Hello again, um, this session um, I'm going to be doing for this YouTube video is on macro photography and in particular inset photography. Um, it is something that's always fascinated me since I took photography up um, and I bought a macro lens. Um, you'd be surprised at the, the miniature alien world down there um, and you know the things that, 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 that you miss walking by. Um, you, know, you can't believe when you get close to take a photograph you might think that's strange me saying that but it is something I, I'm quite fascinated with um, so what I'm going to be doing I'm going to be using my macro lens um, to take some photographs of some beetles um, we've got a potted lily plant in the garden so there's some lily beetles on that so what I'll do is I'll do a little session using my camera when the natural light is very good um, and we can get the settings um, uh, appropriate to get a decent image and then what I'll do is I'll show you what you can do with a flash um, so that you can increase what's called the depth of field i.e. how much of the image you have in, in focus so you might have uh, for instance um, uh, a bee uh, with a shallow depth of field you might just get the sort of the, the, the front of the nose I don't know if it's called a nose whatever it's going to be um, and the eyes and then if you can change the settings to get a more increased depth of field you might get all the body and the wings on well a flash will allow you to do that i will explain briefly how you do it i'm not going to get technical on settings uh, and the science of light entering cameras because basically i'm too thick to be able to do that but i can certainly show you how i do it and what the outcome is with the images um let's have a quick uh, sup of my brew cherry bait well biscuits beautiful you can't beat them it's just i eat about two packs a day um, so as I say macro photography I love it, fascinates me drives Mrs B mad if we're ever out going for a walk she'll end up half a mile in front of me wondering where I've gone and I'm delving into somebody's uh, bush somewhere hedge bush obviously uh, looking for insects and then I have to rush back and get my camera and start snapping away so I do hope you enjoy this uh, that it'll be split up into a bit of me doing this showing you how my flash works a bit on settings um, with comparisons on settings again I don't want to uh, you know get you down with 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 the theory side of it and it is going to be very basic and as short and sweet as possible so I do hope you enjoy and I hope it inspires you to go out and get amongst that little alien miniature world uh, that you pass by every day uh, and at least have a look at it and if you've got a camera try and get some photographs and share them so I hope you enjoy thank you Right, today um, this video is going to be focusing on uh, macro photography, in particular insect photography. Um, I did one a few weeks ago with a lily beetle, there's a lily plant there, which I've put onto the uh, garden table. There are some lily beetles on there, I've had a quick look. Um, I'm going to be using my 45mm macro lens, um, and once I go over there I'll explain what I'm doing, um, how I achieve the photograph, um, and then I will go through a little session with the flash and the DIY flash diffuser I've got to show the difference between the pictures. So um, hopefully you'll get something from this and you can give it a go. Uh, wasn't wearing the cap before, did a video, too bright, glare was horrific off my forehead, hence this cap that my wife and sisters do not like me wearing. A few weeks ago took a photograph of a lily beetle, a red lily beetle, got some good feedback on Facebook so I thought I'd show you how I do a macro photograph again of a lily beetle first without the flash and then hopefully with the flash. Um, they are upside down, they're on this leaf here, they are in a bit of a root position, maybe more lily beetles tomorrow I suspect. Trick is with the camera, don't get into the composition and get them all in the frame and then start manually focus. Do that before, pre-focus and then move your camera back and forth whilst taking photographs and you should be able to select one that's in, in focus. So they're probably taking about 15, 20 photographs and we'll go through my computer and select the best one. So that's how I've done that. Uh, I can explain some of the settings uh, when I upload the video, but I won't go through that at the moment. 
So what you can see here from this video, obviously my fingers there just for scale, um, showing those little beetles doing the rude things, making baby beetles. Now, when we zoom in a bit, you can see there, the camera was actually on a tripod here, and you can see the movement in the antenna and the feet and the uh, lily bud head moving to and fro. That's going to affect how crisp your image is. Again, this was on a tripod, but look at that movement with the wind and the leaf and their antenna. So again, your settings are essential uh, in that you get them right, so you get a crisp, sharp image. So when we look at the image there, you can see the antenna go blurry towards the front and back, as are those front feet. So the depth of field is shallow. So from the introduction, um, you've seen that we're doing insect macro photography and I've mentioned um, the importance of, of, of using a flash as well. Sometimes with the light, um, it's a lot more difficult in macro. The reason being, for example here, I've got my camera there and that's the flash I use. We imagine that the subject is my finger and you're that close. You've got all the camera, your head blocking out light, there might be foliage around the insect. It all blocks out light and your settings can go all over the place. And trying to get that clear picture with a good depth of field can be difficult. So what we can use is the flash. Now the issue here with the flash fixed to the camera is that flash head will not drop down any further. So with my subjects here, because that's how close you can be um, with a macro lens, I could be taking a picture where my finger is there. Obviously the light is going in that direction and not down here. So what we do, we need what's called something to bounce the flash off to send the light down. And then ideally it can be quite harsh from this because the settings don't go down as low as that distance here. So it'll, it'll wash the um, image out. So we then have a diffuser as well. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll just show you the bits and pieces I use um, for the flash diffuser. So I'll just set a little bit up now and just uh, and just show you. So firstly, you can just have a hood like that that literally goes over the top of there. I won't put it on because I don't really use it that much. So it slides over there and that will diffuse the light, that white cover in there. Um, what I use is, and did buy this off the internet, it's not overly expensive, you get a metallic side and a white side and what it does, it straps over the top of the uh, flash head there. Um, what I'll do, I'll just set it up uh, and then come back to you shortly to show you, to show you what the setup is like. So what it does, there's a velcro strap goes around there and that holds that on there. So you can, it's quite malleable, you can move that around. So what it does, the flash will bounce off that reflector and drop it down here. Now I have tried it with just that and it still doesn't get the spread of light for the subject that's here. So what I did, I did a homemade um, diffuser, which is quite crude, but it works quite well, which I will show you now. So what we've got here is a piece of corrugated card that you can see and all I've done I cut a window out of it. This is some sort of part translucent white material which I think is an old um, diffuser sheet anyway. I've cut it out, I've literally taped it on the inside there and I've cut a hole out here to go over, um, over my lens. So again I'll just fit that on and show you what that looks like when that's fitted on. So what we've got, as I say, it looks quite crude. Um, I've got my lens hub there, so it keeps this section on. Now what will happen is, this flash here, it will bounce off the top reflector, as in underneath there, and then it will go through here and come down on the subject. So it comes out of the flash head, bounces off the reflector, goes down through the diffuser, and then your subject around here, it should get some good spread of uh, of light and even the image out so you can change your settings um, you can change your settings on the flash to up or down it so it's a bit of trial and error I'm no flash expert whatsoever I don't really know anything about it I, I set it up I do it if it's wrong change the settings reduce the intensity of the light or increase it until you get that spread of light so that's literally my crude flash 
diffuser but it's fairly cheap uh, and it works a treat so we'll give it a go afterwards and you'll see how it works hopefully i'll have shown you the setup with my diffuser it is a bit crude but it's homemade um, so i've explained that so hopefully the light will bounce off that reflector go through the diffuser and um, the image for the, the beetles diffuse the light it should be a lot more even and balanced and we'll get more depth of field so we'll give that a go again same principle moving forward so Looking at the photos, they're not too bad though, so we'll go through on the computer again you'll see the difference between that with my crude diffuser. Uh, it works a treat though, cheap, and um, it's worth uh, making your own. Fits nicely onto the hood that I've done there. Um, so we'll go and see what they're like and what they come out like for an image if you wanted to print it or just for uh, social media. Now the image here using the flash, you can see the antenna are all in focus, as are the feet. That's because we've got the, the depth of field, we've got the uh, higher F number and uh, a shutter speed of 250. So the flash allows us to do that and get more in focus. So if you compare the two there, you can see no flash, the antenna are a bit blurry, as are the front feet. And the bottom one, which is one we've just shown, um, is a lot clearer. Right, what I'm going to do with this next section is just to explain a little bit about settings because I think it's quite important with the uh, macro photography. So I've done a couple of um, images with collages on uh, to explain it. So I've done, I've taken a photograph of, it'll become apparent, of, of some pebbles and shells close up just to show you the difference in settings to get the depth of field. So whether you just get in the front of the image or as far back as possible, and that's also um, comparing using a flash. So I'll quickly show that and explain it. Um, then um, it'll explain what uh, an F number is, which is your aperture setting. If you see an A setting on your camera, that's the aperture. That's how much light is let into the camera. Um, so the F number that is low, so if it's say F2.8, that means it's a shallow depth of field, i.e. you'll only get the front of the image. If you went all the way up to say F22, um, that would you know probably get all of the image. If you're doing landscape, you might be looking at like maybe an F14, uh, 16. So macro photography, um, if you're getting a low F number it gets the front of the image but you're going to need to start using a flash or have exceptional natural light uh, to up that F number. The shutter number, the S, if you see S on a camera that's your shutter priority. The S number is the shutter speed, how quick it takes a photograph. So in the video earlier it showed the leaves moving and the insects moving. You'd need a quick shutter speed to basically snap that image uh, quickly in time so you get it uh, freeze-framed without any blurriness. If you have a slower shutter speed, tend to work off a minimum of 180 depending how steady you are with your camera because you get camera shake, which is yourself shaking, you get movement in the image as in the leaf or subject. So the shutter speed, you want to look at it really a minimum of 160. Some people are exceptional and get it even lower and get a, a, a clear image. Um, so the quicker the shutter speed, so if you had like say S2000, you would probably get a bird flapping and get its wings still or a fast moving car. Um, then there's the ISO number, which is you can increase that to allow more lighting effectively. So if you have to reduce your shutter speed or your aperture, you can increase the ISO. But what happens there is you get a bit of what's called grain or noise on your image, a bit of speckling pixelation which I'll show you so we'll show you that as well um, with some photographs of, of Emma's painting brushes just to compare the differences so the following photos should explain hopefully what that means just visually for you to look at so I've set up these pebbles and shells I've got the flash set up but I do take some photographs without the flash and then with the flash so the next image coming up is going to be a split image it's going to show you the depth of field 
um, that you can get dependent on the setting. So here on the top left, you've got a shallow depth field f2.8. So you see the front of the pebble, then we go up to f11, it moves midway back, f22 a bit further back. But then the flash, if you see the the color and the shadowing and highlighting is a lot better and you get quite a lot of the image and the shells in the back are a bit clearer. So that's how we achieve depth field. Now, this is just an image of some brushes. You can see it's F6.3, 120. Now ISO of 200, so that's a lower ISO and it's a clear image. Now when we move on to this collage here, you've got to look at the ISO, so then we bump it up to ISO 1000 and then move across to 3200, 12800 and 25600. Look at the graininess, the increase in ISO will make your graininess more severe on the image. Right, just after I've finished doing the photograph of the lilies, um, a neighbour Pam WhatsApp me to say there was some unusual beetles on the lily, um, sorry, on the lavender. Um, so what I'm going to do, we're going to go around and have a look and with a view to getting a photograph which can tag onto this uh, this video. Um, I don't, weird, when I was 18 I was into girls, uh, 50, insects, yep, weird, let's go and have a look. Just go next door to Pam's here. Um, let's see what we've got. I don't know what the beetle is. We'll have to maybe identify it shortly. So if we look, this is Pam's lavender here. And if you can see, see the silhouette. We've got a beetle on that one there, that lavender. So what we'll do is we'll come back with the flash and the camera and get a photograph of it and get it identified. So, new beetle. Beautiful. So here's a video of this rosemary beetle um, at Pam's next door. So you can see it there, again, comparison to my finger, you've got a lot of movement in the lavender itself. Uh, zoom in a bit closer, again that would technically be what my frame would be when taking the photograph and look at that movement so your settings need to be right to capture it so it's sharp and clear there's one there with um, the beetle with its its head retracted I didn't even know it would come out like this then it started moving so using the flash that's actually walking down the lavender and it's got its antenna and head everything's crisp so I hope you enjoyed that video, it is nearly 20 minutes long but I think if you're new to it and you want to find out about my photography there should be enough in there to get you going. If you're already knowledgeable um, and not meaning to insult your intelligence these videos are for a bit of fun for me to keep occupied and to try to share some, uh, some of my photography ideas. Um, what I've done now just to follow, there's going to be a series of images of other macro photographs that I've taken using these a mixture of these techniques. Hopefully it'll inspire you to go out and, and have a go yourself. So I'm having to think about what to do for the next video and uh, hopefully that will be uh, uploaded soon. Thank you.